Good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting for Monday, May 29, 2018. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. If you could please rise and please remain standing for the invocation by Pastor Glenn Harless, Thanksgiving Lutheran Church, 3702 South 370 Plaza. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I invite you, along with the audience, to join me in prayer. Good and gracious God, you have given us this great land as our heritage. Help us always to remember your generosity and constantly to do your will. Bless our community with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence and discord, confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Defend our liberties, Lord, and give to our mayor and this city council, whom we have entrusted with the authority to govern, the gifts of knowledge and wisdom to lead well the city of Bellevue. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We give you thanks and praise that we live in a land where we are free and encouraged to participate fully in the political process. And so, Lord, tonight we humbly invite the blessing of your presence at this meeting of our city council. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Item three, Sabrina, please call roll. Mr. Hansen? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Mr. Shannon? Here. Mr. Pricer? Here. Mr. Burns? Here. Mr. Motry? Here. Thank you. Item number four, this meeting will be conducted according to the Open Meetings Act, posting the entry to the council chamber. Item five, approval of agenda, consent agenda, agenda minutes, and advisory committee reports. Item 5A is approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda. I have a motion. Second. Second by Mr. Modry. Discussion or questions? See none, please vote. <clears throat> Do we need someone to vote? Mr. Price, are you not logged in? Well, I thought I was. I got the agenda, but nothing came up. Uh, He's following in blue. He's following. Uh, the right meeting? Actually. So quiet. <laughs> he was just viewing the agenda rather than participating. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I think he's just relogging in. Have to relog in.
the quieter the crowd gets, the nervouser he gets. Okay. All voted yes. <laughs> Thank you. Item 5B is the approval of the consent agenda. The following items are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion, unless a city council member objects, in which case that item will be removed from the consent agenda and placed in its normal sequence on the agenda. Item 5B1, approval of minutes up from the May 14, 2018 city council meeting. Item 5B2, approval of claims. Second. Motion. Motion by Shannon, second by Mr. Cook. <coughs> Discussion or questions? See none, please vote. There we go. All voted yes. Thank you. Item six, special presentations, none. Seven, liquor licenses. Item 7A is Charlie T. Marco and C.T. Marco, Inc. doing business as Chandler Bar application for a Class I liquor license at 2617 Chandler Road West and Charlie T. Marco as manager. Charlie Marco, here. I'll open for public hearing on this item at this time. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please do so. See none, I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion that we recommend approval to the Nebraska Liquor Control Commission to Charlie <clears throat> T. Marco and C. T. Marco, Inc., doing business as Chandler Bar, that their application for a Class I liquor license at 2617 Chandler Road West and Charlie T. Marco as manager be approved. Second. Second by Mr. Hansen. Discussion or questions? Mr. Modry? Uh, yes, uh, I'll be abstaining from uh, voting for items 7, A, B, and C for religious and personal reasons. Thank you. No further questions, please vote. Is it not? <laughs> Do you want me to hit it twice over that again? Did yours go away too, Shannon? <clears throat> Is it back? Should be. Has it reappeared? We're not voting three times. <clears throat> Five yes votes, one abstention. Thank you. Item 7A1 is the application for CT Marco Inc. doing business as Chandler Bar to operate as a Kino satellite. I'll open for public hearing on this item. Anyone wishing to speak, please do so at this time. I'm John Hassett, your keynote operator, and I am answered here to answer any questions. But Chandler and Pharaohs, they exchange bars, and we have to relicense them. So. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Hassett? See none. Are there any others that would like to speak at this time on this item? See none. I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion we approve the application for CT Marco Inc. doing business as Chandler Bar to operate as a casino, as a Kino satellite. Second. Second, Second by Ms. Mr. Preister. Questions, concerns? See none, please vote. Five yes votes, one abstention. Thank you. Item 7B is the application for the Crook Inc. doing business as Farrell's Bar and Grill to operate as a Kino satellite. 
I'll open for public hearing on this item. Anyone wishing to speak, please do so at this time. See none, I'll close a public hearing. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve the application for the Crook Inc. doing business as Farrell's Bar and Grill to operate as a Kino satellite. <clears throat> Was that a motion to approve? Motion to recommend approval. Mm -hmm. Second. Second by Mr. Preister. Discussion or questions? See none, please vote. Five yes votes, one abstention. Item 7C is Fraternal Order of Eagles, number 3912, application for a special designated liquor licenses to sell beer, wine, and distilled spirits during open air fests on June 16 from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., July 28 from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., and August 18 from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. in an outdoor area at 209 West Mission Avenue. I'll now open for public hearing on this item. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please do so at this time. See none, I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Cook. Starting to see a pattern. I'd like to make a, recommend, a recommendation of approval to the Nebraska Liquor Control, Control Commission, the Fraternal Order of Eagles 3912 application <clears throat> for special designated liquor licenses to sell beer, wine, and distilled spirits during an open air fest on June 16th from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., July 28th from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., and August 18th from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. in an outdoor area at, 20, at 209 West Mission Avenue. Second. Second by Mr. Hansen. Discussion or questions? See none, please vote. Five yes votes, one abstention. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mayor. Just going back to item 7B, the application for the Kino satellite at Faro's Bar and Grill, Mr. Cook changed his motion to approve to a motion to recommend. I think the original motion to approve should be the one accepted and reflected in the minutes because a Kino satellite application doesn't go to the Liquor Control Commission. It's approved by the council. Do you have that, Sabrina? Thank you. Item eight, ordinance for adoption, third reading, none. Nine, ordinance for public hearing, second reading. Item 9A is ordinance number 3905, sale of city surplus property just south of 1311 Bluff Street. Thank you, I'll now open for public hearing on this item. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please do so. Mr. Buckley. I just want to point out uh, before the meeting, Mr. Shuchuk uh, showed me the legal description has a slight error as it's printed in your package, and we will get that changed to the proper legal description before third reading. Thank you. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing on this item. Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to check if this line, and I haven't contacted OPPD to ask them, <laughs> But if this entire line is no longer active or being used because the Kramer power plant is no longer there and operating, what about all the rest of the land, all the commons and all the area underneath the power lines? I mean, is it available? Is it something that other, we did this little section, but I'm just, I guess I need to call in, but if anybody knows the status because it's sitting there, I think we mow it, I think we maintain it, and it just seems if it's never going to be used, we may look at that as something we start selling off or do something with. So I don't see anybody offering an explanation, so I will call OPPD and ask them. Mr. Cook. I, I think Mr. Pricer is bringing up a good point. I, I would ask that Mr. Manjimali, maybe through our city legal maybe they could research it because 
it, that line stretches all the way up to 36th Street. Right. So there's just a, a ton of property. We've had development, especially out on 25th Street, Spring, uh, I'm going to say it wrong, Spring Ridge, Spring Creek or something, I think, is there by it. So I, I think it's an a answer that w the council <clears throat> needs to know because if that land is available, we may have several property owners that would like to maybe, that are adjoining the property, would maybe then be willing to purchase it. If it's, I'm assuming it's our, pro our property, we're the one selling and making motions to sell it. I think it's something we need to research and make a decision. And if it is, maybe we could even contact some property owners and see if, if at the bare minimum, we could sell it and we're not mowing it or maintaining it. So. Mr. Roberts? I believe this is the second uh, piece of land that we've sold out of the commons area. And so, yeah, if people, but we only do it when they come and approach us to buy it. We don't seek right. anybody purchasing. Well, and I, you know, it, it runs through some of our parks, which, which are our parks, but, it, you know, I, I think it even hits the Reed Center up here off of Lord Boulevard. I think, I just think there's a lot of opportunities there where we maybe could sell some land and not have to maintain it. That's just a thought. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? The uh, second, the third reading will be June the 11th. Item 10, ordinance for introduction, first reading. Item 10A is ordinance number 3906. Issuance of wastewater revenue refunding bonds, series 2018 in an amount not to exceed $3 million. Staff requests that the statutory rule requiring reading on three different days be suspended and the vote be taken after the public hearing is held at this meeting. Mr. Severson. <clears throat> this is a good one. These are fun to talk about, saving half a million dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in 2008, you can decommission the sewer plant and they needed some money for it. At the time, the NDEQ stepped up and loaned them money at 4% plus a 1% <clears throat> fee. Um, we now have a chance to refinance that with even better rates. Uh, we probably missed some very good rates in the past, but we also had to uh, to take our time and make sure that the wastewater fund would support the bonds. And uh, that was a, a little bit of a problem for a while. However, um, your, your person managing it, Epiphany Ramos, Jeff Roberts, Joe Mangimelli, they've done a great job over the past couple of years. And now we're in a position that we can quite easily go out and market these bonds. So, um, however, bonds versus a loan to NDEQ, it comes with uh, some covenants and uh, some c compliance issues. And what I did is I, I have our bond council and underwriter here just to briefly remind you, I think I, I wrote it in the, uh, in the, on the cover page that uh, you've, you've got to be ready to continue to manage the wastewater fund. And that might mean saying no once in a while or being ready to say yes to rate increases um, because uh, we, we do need to make sure that our bondholders are happy with us. So uh, Mr. Mike Rogers and Cody Wickham, and uh, we'll make this brief, but I think it's something that you need to hear. Welcome. Uh, good evening, uh, Mike Rogers with Gilmore and Bell, the, the city's bond council. Uh, uh, thanks, Rich. As, as Rich mentioned, um, uh, this would be a publicly offered uh, bond issue, which the city has done numerous times on, uh, on other occasions for other purposes. Uh, the bond ordinance would pledge the, the sewer revenues, which are currently pledged to, to the NDEQ, um, and uh, would uh, require the city to maintain rates uh, sufficient to pay debt service coverage and also to pay uh, the expenses of, of the system. Uh, currently, the NDEQ loan requires a 1.1 times coverage uh, for ongoing purposes. This ordinance would not would just simply require a one times coverage. So that's that's a positive uh, thing. But um, to to borrow more money for the for the sewer fund, we require a 1.25 times coverage test be uh, be met. Um, the ordinance delegates the authority to set the final terms of the transaction. 
uh, to the mayor, city administrator, and finance director. Um, the bonds haven't been marketed. Uh, Cody can talk about that in a second as to what the current market uh, looks like. Uh, but um, they haven't been marketed. There are, are no rates established today coming into the meeting. Uh, so, so those parameters are set forth in, in the ordinance, so not to exceed $3 million principal amount, a maximum interest rate of 3.5% uh, uh, um, uh, true interest cost, and, and requires that there be present value savings on, uh, over the current rates with NDEQ. Um, uh, Rich mentioned this is different. Uh, a, a loan with NDEQ is um, it's just the two parties uh, uh, borrowing money from the state compared to the offering of securities, which a bond issue is an offering of securities under federal securities laws. Again, the city does that uh, with some frequency, but that's uh, a different transaction than a loan with, with NDEQ. So there is some ex securities law exposure um, uh, to the city as with any bond issue. Also, these would be tax exempt uh, uh, bonds. Uh, so there's on ongoing tax compliance that goes along with those, again, uh, like other bond issues of the city. Uh, so, and then the other thing to mention um, is that the, uh, the three readings is being asked to be waived, um, and that's uh, customary for cities of the first class to have three re readings waived for a bond issue, uh, and it's mo typically done because the city wants to access the current interest rate markets, as, as you may be aware, rates change from day to day, and if, if we have to wait longer, then uh, we would be in a different interest rate climate. Um, and uh, potentially, and uh, they could go up or down, but that's uh, typically why the three readings are waived just to capture uh, the current rates. And uh, with that, uh, unless you have questions for me right now, I'm happy to come back up to answer questions, but Cody was gonna talk about uh, the more of the financial terms. Of are it. there any questions for Mr. Rogers? So thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, Cody Wickham, DA Davidson, uh, bond underwriter for the city. Um, Rich kind of stole my thunder with all of the good news to report, so I'll just give you a little more color and background into the transaction itself. Uh, as he mentioned, we're taking out the NDEQ loan that was established back in, it was actually 2009 when the loan was, was finally issued. Uh, he mentioned that was at a 4% interest rate with a 1% administrative fee. Where we're looking in uh, for current interest rate environment would be to refinance that down to approximately 2.802 percent um, uh, on a transaction such as this the the gfoa or the the government finance officers association we we go off of kind of their litmus test their standard for a, a, a present value savings percentage that justifies uh, or, or gives us kind of the the guidelines for when a city or, or issuer or municipality should move forward with a refunding and if if the amount of savings to be generated is greater than 3% of the total amount to be issued, they say it's a good time to move forward with the refunding. And in this case, the projected savings of $486,000 is a present value saving percentage of 12.4%. So it's it's definitely well beyond that 3% threshold that, that we deem as a good refunding. So it's, it's definitely very good transactions for the city. Uh, Mike mentioned we don't have rates locked in yet. Uh, we, I wanted to ask that the ordinance be considered by the council tonight and then we'll, we'll move forward very quickly. We've already worked on preparing the official statements and the bond offering documents. So we'll be ready to go and hit the market very quickly. Um, try and get you locked in as soon as possible. The lastly, I guess I'd like to reiterate, uh, Rich men mentioned there were some opportunities in the past uh, that you, you could have looked at refinancing this. Uh, it, it really wasn't a good time for the city. Uh, but we have to have certain uh, coverage ratios uh, to have marketability on the bonds in order to go out and, and execute good interest rates. And it wasn't until recently that um, over the last three years where you've had significant improvements in that wastewater fund and your administration's done a fabulous job of getting that fund into a position where we're comfortable going out and selling these bonds. So your, your, your revenue stream looks great now and uh, we're, we're confident that we're gonna be able to get you some very good revenue interest rates tax exempt. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Wickham? Mr. Shannon. How much does the city's not having a bond rating impact our ability to go to market and get good rates? I mean, what's the, the impact? Are we looking at 0 0.2, 0 0.3? What do you think? Uh, well, actually, so uh, obtaining a rating for, for an issuance of bonds is, is, is issue specific. So it's something that we quantify deal by deal uh, on a deal of this size. We're, we're asking you to approve an ordinance that's not to exceed $3 million, but we're, we're forecasting that the actual amount 
that would require to pay off the NDQ loan is six, or two million six hundred fifty-five thousand. So to go to a Standard and Poor's or a Moody's and obtain a rating for a deal of this size wouldn't be very cost effective. You're going to pay anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand dollars to obtain that rating, and it's only good for this particular deal. Uh, your coverage ratio is well over four times. Uh, so a, a non-rated bank qualified deal, which is what this would be in the market, uh, we think we can get just as good a rates as if we go out and, and get this particular deal rated. So it, it really right. kind of looking at rated versus non-rated on this deal, uh, we think non-rated is the way to go. All right. <coughs> and a follow-up question, and you can pass on this if you want. Um, we have statutory requirements for three readings here, and with good reason, I, I have no problem uh, suspending the rules and, uh, you know, going straight to a, a, a vote on a, you know, a first reading, but we're not even to market. We're, we're, we're not even to a point where we can say, well, we can get this if this, I mean, this is, this is, this is just, I don't know. I mean, there, there's nothing to this request. Well, what we would, what we would hope to do at DA Davidson, uh, you know, we have a June fed meeting come up where they're expected to raise rates. If, if we have the authority to go out and, and go to market quicker, uh, we think it would be beneficial to the city that we could lock in rates before they move against you. Um, but that's probably more of a, a, a mic question, I guess, but from our standpoint, that um, that's where we see the benefit. Mr. Mangimelli. Uh, the Mike, uh, Mr. Rogers referred to the parameters, and that's what you're being asked to approve tonight is the parameters within which this marketing of, this, of these bonds would be uh, issued. Uh, you're giving them the authority to act on our behalf. So the... Part of the parameters, well, just to add to that, uh, Joe, is final rates. Final rates and terms are, are to be determined and signed off by the uh, mayor, city administrator, and finance director. So we'll come back with here's when we do go to market. Uh, we'll come back. Here's what we're seeing today, and here's what we can lock in today. And that would uh, require the city to then execute a bond purchase agreement. So as long as we kind of fall within uh, what we're what the city is expecting as far as total savings and total interest rates and, and final maturity. Um, you do still have the final say where if it, if, if the rates shoot up significantly and the savings goes from 486,000 to it gets cut in half, um, then we have, we also have the flexibility to, to put the deal on hold and, and wait for, wait for the market to cooperate. And this is, this is a common practice, uh, that uh, a lot of cities use to, uh, capture the best rate possible. Are there any other questions for Mr. Wickham? No. Thank you. Do we have a motion? You, you'd want a motion to suspend the rules first? Yes. Before, any, yeah, before we go any further, uh, then we'd have to have a motion to suspend the rules, hold a public hearing, and vote on this item at this, <coughs> this evening. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion that we waive the statutory rule of requiring reading on three different days that that will be suspended and the vote taken after a public hearing is held at this meeting. Second. We have a second by Mr. Burns. Discussion questions? See none, please vote. The vote is five to one with Mr. Shannon voting no. Thank you. I'm now over for public hearing on this item. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please do so at this time. See none, I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a recommendation or a motion to approve ordinance number 3906. Second. Second by Mr. Preister. Discussion questions? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 11, public hearing on matters other than ordinance, ordinance none. Item 12, resolution none, under 13, current business. 
Item 13A is the acceptance of the bid and authorization for the mayor to sign the contract with Anderson Excavating Company, Inc. for the demolition of the structure located at 2611 Harrison Street in the amount of $12,808 to be paid from the Community Betterment Fund. Mr. Peister. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve item 13A. Second. Mr. Sec by Mr. Burns, discussion or questions? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13B is, is acceptance of the bid and authorization for the mayor to sign the contract with Palancic Construction for the demolition of the structure located at 15006 South 20th Street in the amount of $18,000 to be paid from the Community Betterment Fund. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve item 13B. Second. Second by Mr. Burns. Discussion or questions? Mr. Shannon. Yeah, I'd just like to make sure that uh, the city's on good footing here on uh, contacting of the lender in this case. This is a newer house. This is a house with a mortgage that's over a quarter of a million dollars. Um, yeah, this house is less than 10 years old. Um, in contact with the homeowner, um, she was foolishly advised. She made some bad decisions. Um, you know, she had her roof ripped off and this could have just been a roof replacement. And now all of a sudden it stayed open uh, since the tornadoes and we've got drywall <coughs> and floors ruined. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a really unfortunate situation, but I want to make sure that we've contacted the lender, not just sending a letter to the house, you know, like happens a lot of times and nobody ever gets the letter, but I want to know that the lender really knows what's going on before we knock this house down <coughs> and the city becomes liable because the city of Omaha is paying for one of these right now because they didn't do it right. Mr. Christensen, would you like to say a few words? <clears throat> There were letters sent out certified to the lender prior to even the resolution being passed. I spoke with a representative on the phone. They were very much aware of the situation and no one ever recontacted me. Okay. Can you tell us what lender you contacted? I'd have to go back in my records and see. Because I talked to the loan officer that wrote this loan and his bank no longer has it. It's been sold three times. Loan Care Mortgage of Virginia Beach. Yeah, I don't know if that's accurate, but, and we sent something to Loan Care in Virginia Beach? Correct. Okay. Signed receipt right here. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay. Are there any other questions? See none, please vote. Thank you, Mr. Christensen. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13C is the approval of an authorization for the mayor to sign a three-year maintenance <laughs> service agreement with Microfilm Imaging Services in the amount of $1,335 for all three years. Mr. Modry. Yes, I move that we uh, approve item 13C. Second. Second by Mr. Burns. Discussion or questions? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13D is approval of and authorization for the mayor to sign the contract and scope of services for professional GIS mapping services between the city of Bellevue and Midland GIS Solutions in the amount of $67,250 funded through the stormwater grant. What are the wishes of the council? Mr. Burns. I move that we approve item 13D. 
Second. Second by Mr. Cook. Discussion or questions? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13E is the approval of the low bid, and that was the only bid received from Swain Construction Inc. for the 2018 concrete projects and authorization for the mayor to sign the contract in the amount of $1,225,369.07. Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve 13E. Second. Second by Mr. Burns. Discussion or questions? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13F is the approval of an authorization for the mayor to sign the proposal from Thompson, Dreesen, and Dorner, Inc. regarding professional services, including improvements to 25th Street between Town Center Drive and Linwood Drive in the amount of $72,000. Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve 13F. <laughs> Second. Second by Mr. Burns. Discussion, questions, Mr. Shannon? Mr. Roberts, what is the time frame uh, estimated of uh, when this project would move to construction? <clears throat> How far out are we? <clears throat> We'd like to put this out for bid late summer, early fall, because a lot of this can be done in the winter time, so it's a lot of winter work. So over the winter and spring, it'll finish up? Correct. All right, thank you, sir. Any other questions? Discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13G is the approval of an authorization for the mayor to sign the proposal and contract from JMN Construction LLC regarding the bridge repair on 36th Street over the West Papayan Creek in the amount of $30,906. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion we approve item 13G. Second. Second by Mr. Preister. Discussion or questions? See none, please vote. I'm trying. Okay. Should be H. We're on G right now. Thirteen. <coughs> All voted yes. Item 13H is the approval of an authorization for the mayor to sign the proposal and contract with Hymas Corporation for the South Gravity Sewer Rehabilitation Project in an amount not to exceed $356,136. Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve item 13H. Second. Second by Mr. Burns. Discussion, questions? Mr. Modry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I know the original bid for this came in at $1.1 million, uh, and then there was some negotiating things out to get us down to this uh, 356, $360,000. Uh, I'm wondering what, what, what is left off the table? What, what, will what are we doing? now that we're not, or what's not being done now that was originally envisioned to be done with this? Great question. So when we got the bid in, um, we were obviously very shocked. It came uh, very high above the opinion of probable cost for the, um, from the engineer. 
we understood that we needed to look at potentially some different construction techniques, and we also looked at self-performing a huge amount of the scope of work, meaning that our, in our, our own city staff would perform some of the scope of work in basically a conjunction with the contractor. So one of the big things that we took off the table right away was bypass pumping. We do have equipment and we have personnel. So during the course of the construction project, we will be in charge of that part of the project. Um, the other piece of it was um, a, a, long, a long amount of CIPP cured in place lining on part of the project. Um, we are actually going to move forward with um, doing that ourselves as well. So that was a substantial savings that um, I think the original bid for that on a linear foot per price was over $350 a linear foot. Mm -hmm. With us doing it ourselves, we're just in on material and of course our labor, so we are able to keep that to under $100 a linear foot, which is a substantial savings. Um, and we also uh, basically worked with the contractor to evaluate the construction process itself whether or not bursting or open trenching, um, you know, what was going right. to be the most cost effective way to do this. So um, through that open negotiation and conversation, we were able to evaluate engineer the project back down into um, what you see. Okay. Are, are, are there are there any portions? Uh, so nothing was left remain. off. I think nothing that was left your original off. question. Yeah. No, nothing was left off. Everything is to be completed. Um, the uh, goal of the project is to increase capacity on the line, which is mm -hmm. much needed, to repair um, separated joints, which it's an extreme heavy amount of infiltration, one right. of the worst areas in town. That we're paying um, so for. The ROI, yes, yeah. So the uh, return on our investment of this, we're, we're, uh, we're not paying for processing of that groundwater. Right. Um, we anticipate that to be even as soon as 10 years. So. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Epiphany. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Epiphany Ramos with Wastewater. So we have discussion questions. Please vote. Oh, Mr. Peister, did you have a... Just a good job, well done, saving once again almost uh, two-thirds of a million dollars, but we will be expending some of that on some of the process and on some labor, but it will still likely save a tremendous amount of money. So... Uh, nice that staff does that, and I compliment Ms. Ramos for doing it. Thank you. Any other discussion questions? Please vote. Ramos. We do. Ms. The most. Uh, Pricer made the motion, and Burns second. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13I is approval of and authorization for the mayor to sign the project agreement with HOA Solutions for the Bellevue lift station upgrades phase one in an amount not to exceed $97,063.80. <clears throat> Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move to approve item 13I. Second. Second by Mr. Mojri. Discussion questions? Mr. Shannon. Why can't we get to the packet tonight? I, I, want, to, I want to see the documents on this item. You should be able just to click on the document right that says item 13I. Okay. Okay. Give me a second, Mayor. Talked to Mr. Ro oh, that is on. I talked to Mr. Roberts and I talked to Legal today about this contract. I think this is the one we were missing a page, wasn't it? And that's been added back. Okay, so for anyone in the audience looking, page five is being added back into that packet. Uh, on page eleven. No. It's on page 12. Sabrina, was that just a copy thing? Yeah. Okay. I think pages stuck to each other. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. Page Sabrina, 12. can you bring up page 12 of the attachment? And 
This was an area of concern for me. Oh, don't walk through. Oh, okay, you go faster than we do. In the warranty section of this contract, the city is getting a one-year warranty on the workmanship and the materials that are being installed, uh, but the warranty becomes effective based upon substantial completion rather than final completion. And it doesn't talk to the fact that the date would be memorialized. So my concern was that substantial completion is a totally arbitrary date. And how do we know when we're substantially complete? The contractor can come in and say he's substantially complete when he starts. That, Maybe it's three true, months Mr. later. Shannon. That's not true. It, it is an arbitrary date. Um, I've talked to Mr. Roberts. He says that they do document the warranty start date on these items. I'd like to see it documented better in the contracts in the future that um, if we're gonna use substantial completion or arbitrary language like that, that it says something in the contract that that will be mutually documented or something like that so that when we forget and we don't get that date, legal's got some, you know, meeting to uh, say, hey, wait a minute, you know, we, we have to agree on the uh, warranty start date here. But uh, yeah, um, since I do a lot of construction right. contracts, this was this was something that caught me off guard, just seeing this substantially complete versus <clears throat> final complete. Mr. Buckley. I can certainly talk with Mr. Roberts and Mr. Mangimelli to see if uh, we need to insert any additional language to that effect in our contracts going forward, I will say. Mr. Mangimelli. Uh, before anybody is, has additional concerns, substantial completion is a standard terminology uh, with contractors uh, and the city and the contractor have to agree in writing what that date is. So it's not arbitrary, it's when the work is substantially completed to meet the scope of work that they have contracted for uh, and a date is set for that uh, substantial completion. Any further questions or discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13J is the approval of an authorization for the mayor to sign the letter agreement for professional services between the city of Bellevue and Olson Associates for the lift station abandonment project in an amount not to exceed $27,300. Mr. Modry. Uh, yes, make, move to uh, approve item 13J. Second. Second by Mr. Preister. Questions or discussion? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 13K, approval of an authorization for the mayor to sign the agreement between the city of Bellevue and the state of Nebraska Department of Transportation for traffic signal improvements in, an, in the amount of $7,100 as the city share. Uh, Mr. Roberts, I don't know if you were in the chambers at the time, but Mr. Shannon had a question. Is this, this is the project that our share is 5% of the cost? I didn't look at the percentage, but uh, this is a, uh, yeah, this is a 90, 10, Highway safety project 90, with the owners doing 10%, so that would be split between us and NDOT. So 5% is correct. Okay. Thank you. What are the wishes of the council? Mr. Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve item 13K. Second. Second by Mr. Modry. Discussion, questions? See none, please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. 
Item 13L is the approval of an authorization for the mayor to sign an agreement for the library feasibility assessment project with Clark Anderson Partners in an amount of $115,000 plus an estimated $2,700 in reimbursable expenses if necessary. Mr. Burns. I move to approve item 13L. Second. Second by Mr. Preister. Discussion questions? Mr. Shannon. I've been approached by members of the audience that say they'd like to speak on this item. Can we open a public hearing on this item, please? I'll make a motion that we open a public hearing on this item. Second. Second by Mr. Preister. Discussion? Seeing them, please vote. I think springs. What, what is this? No, I know. <coughs> again. The motion hearing. was to open for public hearing by, Ms. by Mr. Shannon and second by Mr. Preister. Thank you. I'll now open for public hearing on this item. Anyone wishing to speak on this item? Uh, Chuck Frederick, uh, 1511 Madison Street. Uh, I'm not really sure that you need to have another study. When I was in the city council, Jerry Ryan was mayor. Uh, we had a study done. We had uh, uh, people from the University of Nebraska, architects, build a, a few models. We took them to the library. And then uh, Larry Cascio on the council at that time got a fundraiser, but nothing was done. So the point is that Nothing has changed. Uh, we need another library. We need it in Southwest Bellevue where uh, where they had determined it should be done before. Uh, I think we should have enough qualified people here to find a location and then do the same thing we did before and maybe then find a fundraiser to to uh, go ahead and he, he said he could uh, probably raise about 80% 80, 80 of the money. I'm not sure that's true now or not, but that's what he could back then. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not a big person for studies all the time. When, a lot of times nothing is done after the study. Uh, why don't we just go proceed ahead and, and do as we did before, uh, take the location. We have qualified people here, both elected and, uh, and uh, uh, hired people in this, in this uh, building, in this office, to, in order to do the right thing. So why, why should we waste $115,000 and they're going to tell us the same thing we already know. Uh, I would I would just suggest we uh, look for a, a location uh, with the land. We know where the land is. It was it was across from Anderson Church before. I'm not sure if all that land is sold or not, but that's where the library was at that time. Was study was done that it should be should be done. We own the land at that time, so I don't know what the what the study is going to do, uh, other than tell us that. We should have another library and we'll do exactly the same thing we're going to do in the way we did in the past. So I think it's a waste of money. Thank you. Mr. Mangimelli. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't think it's a waste of money. This assessment that uh, we're proposing to undertake uh, is a feasibility assessment to engage the community and what the community sees are the needs uh, both for current and future library services. Uh, the assessment will also consider uh, different opportunities and identify potential sites that uh, could be considered for uh, expanding the current library or building a new library, uh, whatever it is the uh, choice of the uh, elected officials at the time that the uh, 
assessment is completed. We hope that uh, engaging the public in this uh, early stage will get them energized so that uh, the next step can be met with uh, positive uh, movement forward, that it does not just sit uh, as a study on somebody's shelf, that it is a, uh, an assessment with recommendations that can be given to the new mayor and the council uh, at that time uh, to move forward, take whatever the next steps they deem appropriate. That survey could be done locally. It doesn't have to be done by somebody we pay $115,000 to. We've done surveys before. Let's do it. Let's do it ourselves. Let's save some money. We don't need. We we know we need another library. We need we need a new one in Southwest Bellevue. Keep the one we got here, the older one, and do build a new one. Uh, we don't need to have spend a whole much money to tell us people what we already know. Uh, do the survey yourself instead of paying somebody to do it. Julie, we have the library director here this evening. Would you like to say a few words, please? Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Julie Dinville, the director of the Bellevue Public Library. I really appreciate uh, Mr. Fredrickson's support um, of uh, a new library. Um, however, this um, architectural site feasibility assessment is more than just a survey to see whether or not we need it. It's to really take a look at particular sites and see if those sites can indeed support what we want to do as far as libraries and library services. So they're going to look at it from an expert and critical eye. And when we identify some sites through the public input portion of um, the project, then they will take a look at those and really say, yes, this will work, no, that won't work and come back to us with a really critical expert opinion on, on the site that we might select. So that's really, we're looking for their expertise on, on that kind of selection. Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mayor. Julie, um, I don't know when Mr. Frederick made reference that there was another study done. Has there been other studies done? Uh, I know in, he, he made reference when he and Mr. Cascio were on the on the council. I don't know how many years ago that was, but has there been other studies done? And if they're so, if if they have been, have they been as detailed as what we're going to get in with this study? No. Um, in 2011, 2012, the Bellevue Library Foundation actually paid for a study, not the city, but the foundation. And at that point, um, we looked at a needs assessment. We did this again in 2016 because the council indicated to us that we needed to update our needs assessment. And what that really did would just look at the current building and whether or not the current building was meeting the needs that we have. So that is all that that did. It did not do a site evaluation um, type assessment. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. so that you're just saying this is gonna pretty much look at everything. I mean, do we need a facility? Can we renovate land, location, bring the community involved and get them on board? Right, this will, this will have a much more in-depth scope in terms of actually looking at a site and whether it really matches what we want to do. Um, you know, literally you look at if we were going to refurb another building, uh, would the load, you know, would that building handle a load that we need, needed to do? Is there space adequate for parking? So it's really going to take a, um, you know, a, a much more focused look at various sites that might come forward through the public comment portion. Yeah, but the last two were needs assessment, so they yeah. are just they were strictly um, looking at do we have do we have enough space for our children's area in the current building only. And this you asked for last year to be and it was put placed in your budget to uh, 
to pay for this study? So uh, we're going to pay for the initial part of this study through savings in the library's budget, and that will go take us through the um, end of this fiscal year. And then part of that study um, will take place through September, October. It'll carry over into the next fiscal year. And we hope to have it completed by, the, by December with a report back to you by December of uh, 2018. Have, have you talked to the candidates that are running for mayor? Do you feel that they're on board with this? Um, as far as just doing the needs assessment? Yeah, have this brought to them about time they no, would take office? No, I have not, Mr. Okay. Cook. Mr. Mangimelli. Uh, Mr. Cook, uh, just a reminder that uh, this project was included in the strategic plan that the City Council adopted March uh, 12 of this year. So this submittal of this item to this evening is just consistent with following through on that strategic plan. And I, I'm not disagreeing with that. I just didn't know where it was budgeted and where the money was coming from. So I guess my concern was if that was done in March, um, you know, our budget had already been set. And if I understand Julie right, she's gonna use savings in her budget from this year, and then it would probably be part of her next budget to finalize it. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Mr. Modry. Yeah, uh, Julie, the uh, needs assessments that were done in the past uh, 2012 and 2016, mm -hmm. uh, part, part, of, part of this assessment looks like it might redo or duplicate some of the work of those previous asse needs assessments. The existing conditions verification part of this looks like pretty similar to what those past needs assessments did. I think that um, to some extent that's true. Mr. Manji Melling might be able to um, chime in on this, but I think our um, architectural firm wants to just sort of, for them, reaffirm that the needs assessment, which you realize now is two, three years old, mm -hmm. because that was begun, I believe, in 2015. And well, 20, and, we approved it in April of 2016, right. and they gave us the report in so, August. So um, Mr. Lawson started that project yeah. um, several months out ahead of that. And so I believe, you know, I don't know that they're gonna spend that much time on that, um, but they do want to make sure that that needs assessment um, is still a valid. Yeah, we don't have a breakdown of how much each of these portions of this are, are costing us. So I, I don't know how much is being duplicated in that part of it from what the previous needs assessment might have given us already. Um, Mr. Mangimelli. So the prior needs assessment just looked at um, the current building space and what staff basically said, well, we'd like to have this, we'd like to have that. And it identified, if I'm correct, 55,000 square feet. That 53. Up to, up to 53. 53. Mm -hmm. And we currently have 20 something That's thousand correct. square feet. Uh, this assessment that uh, we're recommending this evening will verify so that we have the right size of a library that we would present uh, to the city council. Maybe it's not. 53,000, maybe it's 51. And you save 2,000 square feet at three or $400 a square foot, substantial savings. So we wanna make sure that we have the right sized facility uh, that we can present uh, for consideration. Yeah, yeah, I, well, just looking at this, there's five bullet points under that existing conditions verification. and. From what I see, four of those I think were covered previously. Uh, so, I don't know. Mr. Shannon. How did we get to site selection that we're needing an engineer at this point or an architect? I mean, I, I, I don't know. It just seems like we got the cart in front of the horse again here. So um, when Mr. Lawson um, completed his needs assessment study in 2016, um, this is pretty much the standard next step, is that you um, begin then seriously to bring, bring expertise on board to do um, a site evaluation and site assessment. 
And that's next step in the process after you've done, you recognize that you have needs um, based on the assessment that you made. So it, it is kind of next step and recommended by him as well. Actually, you're, you're asking for specific sites to be evaluated here when we haven't done site selection. Right, is, but is that's part of this process. This process will uh, help us develop criteria upon which numerous sites can be considered and give that, again, recommendation to the Marin City Council for evaluation and to select. Obviously, the, uh, the last site needs assessment indicated that the current site is in, insufficient. So we, we, have, uh, we have the site that Mr. Frederick referred to on South 36th Street as a possible candidate. We have other sites that we would like to have ex looked at, uh, including potentially some vacant buildings that uh, might be available. Uh, you see the uh, work that can be done when you've got a building like this uh, and redo it, maybe that's a possibility. The feasibility assessment will give us the assistance we need to evaluate that. All right, I, I agree with Mr. Mudry in, in reading this proposal. It looks like we're duplicating about 80% of what's already been done and we're adding about 20%, but we're spending 115, 117,000. I, I, I think we need to uh, table this and uh, redefine the scope so that we're not duplicating and we're, we're going in a better direction. Mr. Modry. Yeah, I, I don't know that we're duplicating 80% of the entire thing. I think we're duplicating maybe 80% of that one section uh, and, and other things go well beyond that. Uh, I, I guess I also have a question. There were, there were six bidders, uh, bids we received for this? There were no bidders. There were proposals received from six firms. Or proposals, okay. That's correct. And we went through the uh, uh, customary selection and review process. The six were narrowed down to three. Uh, we interviewed those three, and Clark Anderson Partners was the one that was selected by the uh, panel. Okay. What What was the the basis uh, for the selection? Was it low price, technically acceptable, or was it just? It's uh, uh, a was... number of criteria, including uh, prior uh, projects of similar size uh, or uh, nature that they've done the uh, were there any problems they had in a prior mm -hmm. experience what's the technical expertise of the um, of the project manager proposed for the project and the uh, subordinate staff uh, so it was a number of criteria okay thank you a as you would do with uh, any professional service yes thank you are there any other questions for Ms. Denville Thank you, Julie. Appreciate it. Thank Public hearing is still open. Are there others that would like to say a few words? Hi, I'm uh, Jeffrey Dame, uh, 14611 South 24th Street. Um, as for the library proposal, one of the things that I've noticed wasn't discussed at all in terms of feasibility is what the current utilization level of the library is in terms of how many how many uh, library card holders there are, how many people they're seeing in and out of the building of the day, because it seems like that would determine what kind of site you need. And it seems like with all the studies that we've talked about, I didn't hear any of them mentioning anything other than, than architecture. And also maybe considering the, the scope of how we would like the library to move in terms of additional services or something like that before we jump ahead to spending six figures on another study. And so I would, I would urge all of you to, to vote. Mr. Dame, this. if you would sign in and give us your address, Julie can provide you with all of those numbers as far as card holders, visits per day, sure. visits per year, et cetera. So if you'd sign the sheet there. Sure, absolutely. And thank you. I, I, I just wanted to be ensured that um, all those things are, go, are going into this process because all, all I've heard discussed so far was yeah. architecture. And if you uh, uh, would be so kind as to leave us an email address, we'd be glad to notify you when public hearings would be held Absolutely. or public meetings so that we could get your input. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Modry. Yep, thank you. Uh, 
yes, those kind of uh, figures and stuff were in those previous needs assessments in, in the 2016 one, especially. I know uh, they had a lot of that utilization information and, and things. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you very much. The sign in sheet is, is right yep. there. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, go. Ahead. Thank you, Mr. Dane. Are there others who would like to speak at this time on this item? See none, I'll close the public hearing. You do have a motion and a second on the floor. Any questions, discussion? See none, please vote. Vote is four to two with Mr. Shannon and Mr. Motor voting no. Thank you. Um. Item 13M is approval of an amendment to the interlocal agreement creating the Sarpy County and Cities Wastewater Agency and approval of the FY 2018 budget. Mr. Modry. Uh, move to approve item 13M. Second. Second by Mr. Burns. Discussion or questions? Mr. Shannon. Who is our representative to this body? The mayor and I serve in her place if she's not able to attend. Thank you. Any other questions? Please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 14, administration report. Comments must be limited to the items on the current report. Are there any questions for Mr. Mangiamelli? Mr. Hansen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was out of town last week and I read about the, in the Bellevue Leader about uh, Brian, uh, Brian uh, Middle School where you went for the Boys and Girls Club. Can you give me a take on that meeting? It wasn't very complimentary. <laughs> well, the um, groundbreaking was at Bryan Middle School, which is in the city limits of Bellevue, and we were invited to attend. Uh, the Boys Girls Club um, approached the city of Bellevue a couple years ago, I believe, um, and there were a couple teams out there. I was asked to sit on the Bellevue Public School team, um, but uh, um, they chose to put it in a, in, it's in Bellevue, but it's a Bryan Middle School. Um, so the need assessment showed we certainly had some areas in Bellevue, um, and this is in Bellevue, so we're glad it is here in Bellevue. Um, I think it'll take approximately another eight months, and Mr. Preister was there as well. Um, but probably in the spring of next year, I believe. Would you like to say a few words, Mr. Preister? Sure, Mayor, I can add to that, that the construction has already begun. The groundbreaking was kind of ceremonial because most of the dirt was already moved and they were moving ahead with the project already through the fundraising that was done. Uh, most of that money was coming from some Omaha businesses and it will be named after uh, Mr. Henry Davis, who is a South Omaha businessman and he donated a large sum of money to it as well. He's also invested very heavily in Bellevue University. So we appreciate his commitment to both communities and it is a, a community center. It will be open to all students in the area. So any students from any of the Bellevue high schools or the Bellevue junior highs could all attend. It will be open after school hours. So students don't have to be transported to the after school services and students can stay there until well into the evening for those who need some additional supervision or additional help with studying 
the, all of the facilities in the school will be available. But in addition to that, there will be a new gym that will be a part of the new development and some additional computer classrooms so that the educational component especially can be provided. So it's an after-school service and it will, uh, they're anticipating about 350 students a day. This, unlike their normal operation, which starts about age eight, seven or eight, and goes through 18, this will be limited to middle school and high school primarily. Great project. Oh, Thanks, the, the last part that the mayor started, the, the construction has started. It's expected to be open for the start of the school year in 2019, next year, before school starts. They hope all construction is done and they're ready to operate. Thank you, Mr. Preister. Thank you. Are there any other questions? See none, we'll move on to item number 15, public request to be heard. <clears throat> Any member of the public addressing the council shall abide by council policy resolution number 35 regarding the principles of conduct and decorum, which states any statements made during the city council meeting by the mayor, members of the city council, city official and employer, members of the general public shall not involve personal impertinent or slanderous attacks on individuals regardless of whether the individual so attacked is elected official, city official employee, or a member of the general public. And city code section 2-68 regarding the manners of addressing the council. Copies of the aforementioned rules are posted on the outside of the council chambers. Speakers shall limit their presentation to five minutes. Good evening. Good evening, Chuck Frederick, 1511 Madison Street. I hope everybody had a nice and safe Memorial Day weekend. A little warm, but it was nice. Uh, I want to thank uh, Pat, uh, Councilman Pat Shannon for being instrumental in, in uh, eliminating the public request to be heard so it was not eliminated. And I want to thank all the people who voted to keep it in. Uh, I've talked about the lack of, lack of parency uh, in, this, in, in this city and we need more transparency. Uh, we need the state auditor to come down and take a look at our financials. Uh, another thing, very obvious, transparent, is this podium. I've suggested cutting this off. No matter, I've sat three or four different places, locations. Wherever I sit, one of you council people or, or somebody up there is blocked. So just, it's, it's real simple, just cut it off. It's, and you can make it nice, it doesn't have to be it looked any worse than it was before, but it, we can't see. We can't see you guys, and and, and so that's that's real simple. Uh, the other thing was that I noticed that two of the pools are open, uh, not open, but they had ceremonies, uh, Casio and Gilbert Pool, but yet this weekend they weren't open for the public, and it's hard to conceive that we had the hottest two days in our in our uh, history. Uh, and we didn't have pools open. I, 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 I'm a little confused as to why we don't have our pools open uh, when we during the Memorial Day weekend and, and thereafter. Uh, the other thing is that uh, on uh, last meeting, one of the people from Public Work gave a presentation about building a road down past. Uh, uh, Walmart down down south to the highway there, and uh, Mr. Uh, Councilman Preister said, "Oh, you know, it took a lot of work, a lot of time, and I'm sure it did." But the thing was that it 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 was done without ever consulting anybody on the council. Now, Mr. Shannon asked about this, and it ended up that uh, there was no cost on it. It looked like we went the most expensive way. And I think it'd be a little bit a lot better if, if there had been some communication with the council people and city administrator and everybody else to try to get the presentation so it made sense. But uh, uh, and I also heard I think that it was going to be down the road before we get it built. Uh, this looks to me like it's pretty important to get done as quickly as possible. So I'd, I'd like to see uh, the lowest possible cost to get a, high, a road down that way without without. Uh, bicycle paths or trails and get get it done so we can get that traffic out of there as, as quickly as possible and 
I think I made it with my five minutes. Thank you. Are there others that would like to speak? See none. Move on to item number 16, closed session. Mr. Burns. I move that the City Council go into closed session at this time for protection of the public interest. The subject matter to be discussed in closed session shall be negotiations on the sale of surplus property in Whispering Timbers. The following individuals will be included in closed session. Pat Sullivan, Joe Mangiamelli, Tim Buckley, Jeff Roberts, Chris Shuchuk, and Rich Severson. Let me entertain a motion to go into closed session. Was that a, was that a motion, Mr. Burns? It was, oh. what did I say? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Shannon, second. Yeah. Discussion or questions? See none, please vote. Because there's a second motion on there. Yeah. That's not an item, though. Okay. So, right here. Motion carried. Does it count? All voted yes. Thank you. City Council has voted to go into closed session at this time. The subject matter to be discussed in closed session shall be negotiations on the sale of surplus property in the Whispering Timbers. 